So being that you've got the company and it's growing, would you ever sell it? No. Never? Well, like I said to you before, you've seen the amounts. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to, I <laughs> would. But, um, but then doesn't that show you how much of a powerful position you're in? Yes, because if someone wants to buy me and put that money in, why are they doing that? Not for my benefit. Yeah. You know, they're doing it to stop it. How do you, um, how do you manage your work-life balance? Like, how, how, how's that? Is that? That's something that I struggle with myself. So knowing that you're, you know, a fellow entrepreneur, but obviously on a different scale, how do you manage work-life balance, relationships or whatever, family time? How do you deal with that? Um, I just make sure, um, I, my brother and my mum's been ill for a long, our mum's had a terminal ulcer for like 20 years, so my main focus yeah. is just my parents really, and that's it, my parents and work. I don't, mm -hmm. my whole kind of, as you know, my whole life is built around, you know, music and what I'm doing. If I'm traveling to a country, if I'm working 24 hours a day, it's not unenjoyable. Like I've got to, I've got to go to China tomorrow, I'll have friends there, I'll go to another country, there'll be friends there. and I'm, it's, it's kind of my life, man. And I don't really have, we've only got a small family. The only, the, I'll just make sure, really to me, the only thing to make sure is I spend time with my mum. If you get the good relationship, perfect. But a lot of people are in bad relationships and they're stunting what they could do. So you've got to, like I said, here's my goal. I'm in a relationship. Is this someone who is going to back me and be good for me and push me here? Is this someone who's going to try and pull me back? You've got to cut it off, man, because you can waste years. But this is the crazy thing. So now this, I'm going to sound like I'm doing matchmaker.com. But someone's going to be like, look, Lee, he's in shape, good looking lad. Like, you know, he's done business, he's doing really well. Like, it, he, it must be like, <clears throat> ta da! Like, it should be just like open season. Like, long term, man. Long term. <laughs> like, it's, you can. <laughs> why do we get here? Because, because, do you know what? It, do you know one? I'll tell you the reason why. Because the part, the element of balance, like you have, you have mm. your work, but it's like who do you come home to? That's also part. No, of you're balance. right, man. You're right. I've not found the like you know I've had girlfriends stuff. I've not found a person that could really understand what I was doing enough to support it. And if they couldn't, I've always been really good at just cutting it right there yeah. without wasting much time because your emotions are very powerful, and if you let them take over what your kind of you know, your end goal is, you can waste time. I mean, you know, people quit music because they get in a relationship. People quit what their dreams are because they get a relationship and they, they can be in the wrong relationship and five years down the line, they're like, oh, I wish I'd stayed in here. It's like, man, you know, my friend, when, when I first went to America in 2011, I took one of my best friends from England out and he was like 24 and I, he was working in a bar and I said, look, I'm going to give you a job. You're going to travel the world with me. I'm going to, you know, take you out of Birmingham. He married the first girl he met in, <laughs> in America, the first one. And then he left, left the company, went home, lived with his mum, took the girl with him and got a divorce two years later and then went back to working in the bar. Look at his face. <laughs> so, and I said to him at the time, he's like, oh, you don't, want me to, you don't want me happy? I was like, man, honestly, I do, but I don't think this is the right relationship for you. And even if it is, you're too young and you've got to think long term, what am I, th you know, you've got a really good job here and an opportunity, but um, he didn't listen. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's something that, like I said, I've, I've struggled with it myself because when I was a, doing the finance, it's like, it makes sense. Okay, make this amount of money, this is your job. And then as soon as I said I'm not doing it, and it's like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, almost like, okay, well, what do I do? <laughs> and then it's like, so how do you make money? And it's like, no, trust me, I'm going places. And I realise all most men really want is just a support system mm. that just is just like, I don't want you to be a part of this industry, but just, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. over here, I come here. And just supporting that and that's the thing i think and the artists have it as well so mm. you start to see a lot of them just they don't have that and then you start saying to yourself okay this is when the whole putting so much focus on your relationships in the industry which can be somewhat soured you need to have something that is kind of like sterile to it i think if someone's going to add something to what you're doing then you know that's the person you should be with that's if they're not going to add well. something yeah. then it, you can't it, and, but it, then it depends how far you want to get to. A lot of people in the music industry don't want to go and change the world. You know, I, I have a specific thing I want to do, and I'm not saying I want to go and change the world, but that's what I want to do. A lot of people, you know, work in management, and they, they love it as a job, but they don't want to work 16 hours a day, and they don't have to, you know. But for me, you know, I'm trying to compete with five big companies, you know, doing, you know, who have billions of pounds. I don't really have time to go and, you know, 
sit, go and watch, what, go to the cinema with a girl on a Friday night, or do anything like that if I don't have to, you know. So I, I probably should take more time to do that kind of stuff, but I just love what I'm doing so much that I, I don't want to at the moment, you know. Do you know what's inspiring hearing you say that? It's because Benjamin was saying the same thing. He was like, exact same thing. He said, like, look, I've got to be somewhere. Because Benjamin's just 21, just graduated from uni. And he's like, bro, I, anything that's taken away from my focus, I can't allow it at this period of my life. So even hearing you say that, and he's already got that mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you just, probably resonate with you. If, you. if you stick with that, you are off. Because yeah. you'll have every decision will come to you. Like I said, you're 21. Your friends are going to start getting jobs and cars and going out and doing this. And you might have no money for the next six years, and then you'll have a lot of money. Or you'll be doing something you love every day, and they won't be doing something they love every day. Because that's the difference. Anyone can go out on Friday and Saturday and blow money in the club and go home and work five days a week. That is not hard to do. Mm -hmm. But getting paid to go out and with your friends every day and do whatever you want to do all over the world is really possible, you know, because as I say, that's what I get to do most of the time. And I, I, can't even believe I, I can't believe I do it sometimes. It's still hard work a lot of the time, but it's only because I spent, you know, so long doing stuff I didn't want to do that I get to do the stuff I want to do now. Mm. If you're not prepared to go and do that stuff, then you're not going to come out the other end. You don't deserve to come out the mm. other end. What, what's, what's the average, like, day and week like for, for you? Like, how does, how, does your, how does your schedule in, how does it all pan out for you? Man, it's so different because I travel a lot, you know. We have so many offices and I'm doing so many kind of new things at the moment. Like, my main focus is our blockchain product, which is just sick. It's like beyond the blockchain product. It's like, I think it's going to be, like when, I, when we announced it, I've got like the, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards, mm. but it, like I, haven't, I, can't even, I can't even talk about it, but it's so big. What we're going to do, it, it will be one of the biggest music project products next year, I guarantee it. So I've been doing that. I've got to go to Asia tomorrow to do a lot of meetings. I'm talking at an event in Asia about blockchain and stuff. I mean, really, it's probably the same as day one, same as you do. You wake up every day and work out how to make money yeah. and how to keep on doing what you're doing. And that's it. You just have to think, ahead it's yeah. not about who works the hardest or you know who's the smartest it really is just about whoever's thinking the furthest ahead yeah. and, and I, then we'll go and go and do that and i think what you start to realize is things i think the power of manifestation is, is important because you actually when you when you start to think like i had this idea and then you see it and you're like it's real <laughs> yeah. and you're like huh and then you have That's what like, I said. wait i've got another idea <laughs> and you're like huh but you know why that is you know why you and me have that in our heads I'm not, my brother's kids are a, like, a, like a, a nice school by him now, right? There's like these three and five year olds. When I was at school, you grow up in a, in, a, in a bad area, you go to school and the teachers basically say to you, you're not worth anything. Mm -hmm. You're gonna grow up and do nothing. You better come to school, you might have a chance. Mm -hmm. I went to my, my brother's kids, it's not like a, a really fancy school, but you know, they have an assembly on a Friday where they give everyone an award for something. And they're like, you're amazing. You're gonna go places. The only difference between a council estate education and a public school, a private school education, it's the same textbooks. But when you're there, you're groomed to be told you're a leader. You know, yeah. like Donald Trump was, that kind mm -hmm. of set of people, you are a leader, you're a boss, you're worth nothing over here. You're not ever going to get out of this. So when we go out and see, hold on, like literally when my only, like my only ambition for today I want to start, it was to make 50 pounds to go to the studio. Then we got an office. And I remember my MSN status, can't talk today at the office, you know, <laughs> every time. We would love to come out, guys, at the, no, I was so proud I had an office. And then it's like, hold on, he's got a bigger office. He's got so-and-so here. And then, and then you kind of see what's possible. And now I've seen what's possible now. And it's only, you know, even through the last three years of going to every country. And I'm like, actually, do you know what? I can take you on. I don't have to be scared of you guys. I don't have to, you know, bow down to you because you've got more money than me. I'm doing my own thing and you're watching what I'm doing and that's it. But when we grow up, man, we're not told that, are we? Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not, it, it's, it's strange because it's, it's almost, when you actually start to see it's possible, because I, like my sisters, they went to private school. I dropped out because I'd, I realised the wealth divide was making me uncomfortable. So I went to a public school in the end and my sister was saying the same thing in, in private school, you're taught that it's possible, it's mm. possible. And it's a certain level of excellence that they, they say that you have to kind of like fit. So it's almost like target driven, but everyone here is supposed to be here and everyone here is going to go there. So mm. you, once you're in the school, yeah. you'll be like, it's already Yeah, written. and once you have that mind, but why are we brought up being told, you know, you're not worth anything? Because we are at school, even, mm -hmm. you know, coming from a council estate, you're really kind of, t like my friend's an actor in Birmingham. And when he told everyone's an actor, what do you mean? I act for a living, I don't understand. No, people pay me to act. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. 
Like they don't understand that anyone, anyone could go and do that for a living. But then, you know, people go to art school, everyone acts. Mm -hmm. Who are the, you know, who are the most famous actors? People that mostly went to private school, <laughs> did acting with other mm -hmm. people in private school. So the only thing, you know, I'd like to leave all of this is with telling people who are from that thing, you know, you really can do anything. Just, but you, you've really got to work in it. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the key component that like people get a lot of the, 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 on the IGs, they're getting the um, motivational speaks and motivational quotes. But I would say like, for what you've got to give, it takes something. So it's not like, I'm just going to have. 100%. And what we were just talking about relationships, you know, I don't have that. I yeah. don't have a girlfriend. I don't have kids. I don't have anything else. Because I've literally, as soon as I've even got close to a girl, if it was even, I'd think, uh, I'm off. Because that was Same. my long-term goal. Same. And I don't think that's a good thing or a bad thing. But it was like, I don't know, it was just what I what worked for me. Yeah, you're, you're on a path to greatness. Do you, do you um, so how do you, so okay, look, so I know from this interview, and I know even from previous conversations I've advised, they're going to be saying that Ditto sounds like it's the perfect place for me to be. But how do you manage having so many artists who are going to want... Because there's still going to be a priority yeah, yeah, scale. Yeah, for sure. No, you're so, right. So, so how, does that, how right. does that work then when the average artist <clears throat> is thinking, I'm on Ditto, but I didn't get that pitch. I That's 100% get... right. And the, the biggest thing is, you know, watch your expectations of an artist. And I think the artist has to ask themselves, you know, what am I bringing to the table that makes them, you know, want to give me a radio plugger or this and that? Because I can't just take every person who's done one song and say, right, let's do a radio campaign, this and this and this. But, you know, if an artist, like I, I met two girls yesterday who are an artist and I really like their music, but I thought it had to change. You know, there were some aspects of it. I thought you guys could be massive. You could just, and I, but they listened to everything we said and were like, okay, we'll go and do it. If an artist comes through, and not even, you know, not even myself. And we as a team can sit with them and say, right, if you do this over the next six months and we will come in and help you do this. That's all it is. You've just got to be willing to listen to advice and kind of and keep going. You know, you might not be ready for, you know, for, for a radio campaign or even for playlisting at Spotify. But I can tell you what you need to do to get there and I can give you the advice to get there. And then once you are ready, I can guarantee that we will, we will help you. And then... You know, we are taking on a lot more staff at the moment, just so I can make sure everyone is getting that feedback. So currently now, what, what are the actual services that they are offering? So a huge part of, obviously, the whole industry now is playlisting. So I have people in every country, pretty much, who will be doing the Spotify meetings and the Apple meetings each week and telling them what we've got coming up. We'll also move stuff out internationally if we think it's big here. Um, we have radio in quite a few of the countries, Australia, Brazil, England. Um, obviously, we've got Alice doing press in England. Um, really the same as the label does, you know. And then obviously we have the subscription clients, so we're building stuff for those guys. Um, so, so, sorry, so to explain for those who don't know, what, what does a subscription client get then? Okay, so a subscription client gets what we had when we first started it. So if you want to go onto all the stores um, and keep all of your rights and all of your money, you pay me £20 a year and you can release as much music as you want. So it's a pretty good deal. And you'll get, it'll be listed on Spotify, yeah, yeah, Spotify iTunes Apple, you can Apple put Music. as much music as you want out it's just £20 a year I think it's 19 actually and then you know you'll get all your money come back to you and that's it and then you know at some point you might be ready to say okay well you know I'm, I'm doing more because it, you know I, I, I really I, I kind of need to spell this out to people more as well it's, you know if you want to come over to that side how many shows are you playing you know how many you know how many Spotify followers do you have I'm not saying you need to have a certain amount but if you can't get 50 you know, that shows me that you're not really working very hard. You can't just come in and say, I've got a song now. There you, go. <laughs> right, you guys take it over. You do everything. My work is done. And do you know what? So there is a million Loads. artists who think like <laughs> I that. Know. I, look, it, lead, I need to go back into that point. Like, actually, I can't even <laughs> say it because then the person's going to know what I'm talking about. All right. An artist is going to create. You see the whole thing about the possibilities of three, three minutes and 30 seconds where your life can change. They have a song and they're like, but all it is is that I need people to hear it. And then they look to like the leads, they're like, yeah, well, leave, do what you, what you did with Stormzy, do it for me, do it for me. And it's like, everything's case by case. But literally, I think the internet's maybe slow people down when they think, I just need to upload this onto Instagram or onto a popular YouTube channel and they'll do the work where they haven't actually gone yeah. out in their actual day to day life and gone to their friends and be like, wait, like, I live in, let's say I live in Tottenham. Can I get a hundred guys from Tottenham who'd want to come and see me perform there? Like, how much is it? To, how much does it cost to book out cargo? Cargo for a venue is cheap. Book out cargo. Finally, you get a hundred people. Just do the cost. 
find out what the break-even thing is, get it filmed, package it. But they won't even do that, but they'll come to... A, a yeah, bit, look. I I, that's what I mean. And even... Let's say you've just got to do that kind of work. And when you're working, you know, as hard as we work, we will definitely get behind you. Mm -hmm. And even the bigger acts, man, like I was saying before, okay, you've sold out, you know, you sold out a show in London, you sold out this. You, then you've got to think, hold on, who knows me in Colombia? Who knows me in Japan? Who knows me here? How am I going to get into that area? There's so much more than London and England and, you know, and where, you know, and our routine, I only know this, you know, because I travel nonstop around all these communities who don't know the other one exists. One of the big things that did so I'm working on this year is doing collaborations. So we're going to take some artists from England over to Colombia and do some work with them. I'm going to, you know, we're going to get, I'm working on a collaboration for a UK guy and a US, really big US guy at the moment, and just kind of trying to intertwine people's fan bases and will stuff. They, will, they, will, they also be, will they all be ditto artists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, the whole thing with it. Amazing, amazing. So you really are seeing it as a, as a global industry, but you're still making it a bit like a, a, a localised community as yeah. well. Yeah, and that took, like I said, you know, I've, I've been to the favelas in Brazil. I've been to a trap house in Atlanta. I've been to a trap house in Atlanta. I've been everywhere. There's nowhere I've not been to try and work out what's going on and find artists. And I, I, I pretty much know enough now about most countries that I can find out what's going to work and where it's all going. Because some countries, you know, are a bit behind other countries. Some, you know, Atlanta, you know, they were doing streaming, well, five years ago, making loads. Gucci Man was, you know, he put out about 50 albums when he was in prison yeah, on Spotify, really, yeah. making millions a year. They didn't even do downloads on iTunes. He wasn't interested, and you saw him four years ago. Mm -hmm. If people had kind of watched that scene here, and look, they're all doing like 10 collaborations. They've all got an album with five collaborations. People are kind of doing that now. It's been coming, but, you know, I was, if they'd have gone over three years ago and just looked at the market, you know, Young Fume, he's just done it, man, with us. Like, we, we did his mixtape, and he's got a, yeah, yeah. one little with Dirk on, cause he's, and he's gone out there and spent time with him. And he was one of the only artists that the, mate, the featured artist actually posted on their Instagram. You know, yeah. a lot of these artists will take the, take the money, do the thing. Oh, no, but he actually went over and spent time, Young Fume did, yeah. with Dirk in the studio, did the video and, you know, made a relationship. And relationships are the most important thing in this industry. You know, you've always got to, it's, that's what I said. The reason I travel so much is relationships. There's nothing else really. Just so I know people, you know, like yourself, that I respect in each place that are going to tell me something I don't know. Yeah. But that's why he was, I think his, I mean, we just did a million streams of that song. And, he, and Dirk posted on his Instagram. He's one of the few, but he saw, he's seen a bigger picture worldwide and he's not doing amazing in the UK, but. Yeah, that's the thing, like, so <coughs> Young Fume, like, cause um, we've had, he's been pitched to us. I think he's with, um, he was with, what's the PR company? I forgot the name, but, um, but when you look at it, it felt like very American centric, but you started to realize that that's what all the artists always say that they want. They, the rappers usually want to have that respect in America. And I was looking at Young Fume and I was like, he's really out there trying. Mm. And he's really out there making that whole he went. He got on a plane and went there and spent time there. He didn't say, how do I get a feature, send money over, send it back. He's got on a plane and spent time there and doing it. He, you will gain it. You will gain so much more from that. There's nothing to stop anyone here. You know, they can ask me. I know people in Atlanta. Just say, you know, where do I go? There's a big road in Atlanta where all the recording studios are. Go out there and make a, you know, it's not expensive. Do you, do you think people, do you think we overcomplicate, like, our goals within the music industry? Like, do you think we make it, like, like it's so unattainable that it requires a major to make it happen for you? I don't, I mean, I think if you look at the urban scene now, I'd say a high percentage are not, is not on a major at the moment. They kind of, they, the majors are getting in very late, so they're offering them a lot of money mm -hmm. that they can't turn down. But I honestly think the urban scene has always been a, a bit ahead anyway. Because, you know, like I said, they've always kind of been more in control as a business than other genres. Um, but there is still that mindset that, you know, well, if I go, for, I've just been to the Warner Brothers office and there's 4,000 people there. All right, well, they're not going to know who you are, mate, so it doesn't bother me. You know, you can come, I've got seven people here who love your music and I know are passionate to go out. And, you know, Joe, who works for me, 2 a.m. on Saturday morning, you know, Saturday, I'm trying to upload something. I can take them whenever time, many of my staff, and, they're, you know, they're doing something. Like that. It's, that's better you know, than going to an office of 4,000 people and who are working on other stuff. Five o'clock. I've been to a lot of the labels and by 5.30, it's a ghost town. <laughs> no one, no one's working late. There's like, all right, go. <laughs> I'm out. And, and you're trusting these people with your career. And that's the thing. This can make, a, whatever you sign now can take you somewhere or it can completely store you and you won't put anything out for three years. You know, so it's a big mm -hmm. thing to think about. A couple of quick questions. Um, 
What what is and you don't have to and definitely don't say who it was. What's the worst deal you've been aware of that an artist has signed? Structurally. Yeah, I think a five album deal at nine percent. And that wasn't who I was talking about earlier, but I've seen, you know, maybe ten percent five album deals with a decent advance. But um but you're never gonna make any money. I think I think the worst part is if someone tells another human being something to their face and knows that they're not going to earn anything for the next 10 years, their family's not going to get paid, their next generation's not going to get any money out of this deal, but you're going to make a lot of money. That's the wrong person to be having to be even in this industry or in your career, but this is what's been happening for, for you know, for decades. Mm -hmm. So why should you trust people now? Because they're coming in saying we're independent now. We can give you a 20% deal, same as Ditto does. You know, we've just hired a, a head of Urban and, you know, we're not, we're not interested in indie bands now. We, we love rap suddenly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to trust that person with your career, honestly. Or do you, yeah? okay, or do you want to trust, you know, someone like us who've been here when it wasn't earning money and who, like who've been running a business when it wasn't earning money for, mm. the, for the love of running it. Mm. But I understand with that, I don't have their operation, but I said I guarantee I will. Mm -hmm. Launch party soon. Shoreditch. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, managers, how important is it to have a really good manager, because I'll speak for myself just in general. I think, um, and it's not necessarily just an urban situation, but there's really poor managers. There's some good ones who get it, but I think they're just seen as being better as the other ones who have not got a clue. It's like, ah, oh, mm. that's my boy, he's my manager. Just just kind of like walk us through why it's important to have a manager, man, a good manager, and how it makes your life easier as a, as a company. I remember Chipmunk tweeted the other day that, you know, how great his manager was and how the fact that he stuck with him, you know, since when he was here. For us, we work with the managers more than the artists a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can have people who are amazing, you know, like Matt, and I'll have guys who won't give me the artwork till it's been released or stuff like that. And these are guys, you know, that are working for you. I mean, look at, um, man, I can't mention any names, but you know the horror stories mm -hmm. in the music industry, man. I mean, even before, the managers were a lot of time, you know, taking money they shouldn't have done but then with that there's some amazing managers you know but it really makes a difference to their career if you look at the artists you know Dave's got great management AJ Tracy has great management they're they're off you know they're huge so it's very hard to find a good manager you know but I think the mistake people make is I've got a song I need a manager okay why do you need a manager because they can go and you know do something I can't do what can they do that you can't do can this manager take you from here to there do they like you know, do they know more people than you? Are they going to do this? Don't just do it so you can put on Instagram, I've got a manager, I'm managed by so-and-so, or post a photo, which so many people do. Mm. You've literally just signed 20% of your whole, like, you know, next body for the next 20 years to someone to put something on Instagram, <laughs> you know? So you've just got to be so careful. There's some great managers out there, and you can tell because if you look at any artist that's massive, I guarantee they've got a good manager. Yeah, that's true. I, I echo that statement. Like, a lot of people, it's... Um... It's, it's, it's almost to be faking a uh, hierarchical bureaucracy. Yeah, like... and that's what you should never do. As I said, when I was poor, I was poor. I didn't walk around in, you know, I lived in a council flat and I didn't have a car and I didn't have any money and everyone knew I didn't have any money. <laughs> you know, I would never try and flex or do anything mm. because it, to me, it was like, well, in five years, I might have some money. And that's it. If I had it done, I'd have got caught in the same trap everyone else does. You don't, don't, you don't need to fake anything as an artist because I'm more drawn to someone who's just really working hard. And if you look at all the guys, like, the really big guys in the music industry, they mostly just tweet about football <laughs> and their kids most of the time. They're not, you know, you've got a few like posers and stuff, but the real big guys, you can't front that kind of stuff, especially the music industry people. You know, if you look at a, a guy and he's got 50,000 followers and it's, you know, it's, you kind of think, well, you're obviously not doing much. And if I look at a guy, you know, like Young Chenks, he's got about four, I don't know, he's like got a few followers. He's producing Young Bane and stuff like that. He's just mm. all about his work, not his Instagram. Yeah. Why have been why have Ditto been like I saw and this is me doing my my Twitter research. Why were they not like nominating you guys for various <laughs> awards? Like what's Lee, what's going on? Man. <clears throat> it's kinda of strange to me. Like the Music Week Awards, I've been going for four years now. And I came into it the first year we were working with Stormzy and a bunch of other people and we got nominated for award and I went, I bought the table, did everything, didn't win, fine. And then one of the artists we had left it oh went to one of the labels the next year and they'd been there two months and then the label won the award for that artist 
And then I was like, all right, okay. Went the next year. <laughs> had had the next year I had, I think last year I had Dave, AJ Tracy, Dodie, who had a number five album, uh, like Mostak, all the biggest artists that will probably someone will win an award for it this year. Like, it just doesn't matter to me. Like I said, we're putting on our own awards on the same night. Yeah. That's my plan. I'm gonna build my own thing. I, I'm happy to be. It doesn't it, like that kind of thing doesn't bother me too much. But obviously, it, did because I tweeted about it. <laughs> but it's, it's I, I, why are I, we not? You mean? Yeah, it's like. Do you feel that? I, 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 I won't throw conspiracies, but do you think there's <laughs> there's a there's an effort to try and silence or minimize what was yes, actually done? Yes, there is. I don't, know, I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think there's a whole public conspiracy. I think on a personal level, like I had an argument with someone on Twitter because they were saying, you're not acting professionally. <laughs> and it was like, firstly, your version of what is professional doesn't matter to me. What you're trying to do is condition me into saying, right, you've got kind of a certain level of authority now. I'd like you to kind of pull that back so you're not kind of overtaking anything else. So you're not being professional, you know, tone that down. Like, why? I've been the same since I started. Like I said, the reason I'm called CEO Lee Parsons on Twitter is because there was two of us in the company. It was a joke. I could change that tomorrow and probably get a lot more credibility, but I'm not bothered. You know, if you don't kind of actually go and tell the truth or whatever your truth is, then you, you just minimize like everyone else. No one is going to tell me how to act running a company because it's my company. No one has to. I can do whatever I want, really. So being that you've got the company and it's growing, would you ever sell it? No. Never. Well, like I said to you before, you've seen the amounts. I mean, <laughs> if I was going to, I <laughs> would. But, um, but then doesn't that show you how much of a powerful position you're in? Yes, because if someone wants to buy me and put that money in, why are they doing that? Not for my benefit. Yeah. You know, they're doing it to stop it. It happens, like I said, it happens to every kind of person on their, on their business progression. You get to a certain point and then you'll get bored up by the bigger one. They swallow that and they get bigger. I may be a small fish still, you know, a small fish to everyone else, because I am, you know, universally. But if I keep growing, I eventually won't be. I can either stop it here, take the money, go and sit on a beach and say, well, that was good. Or I can, you know, I don't pay myself loads of money. I don't, you know, I just, I pay myself a pretty moderate salary. I don't even look at money. I get up every day, I concentrate on doing something I love doing. And no money is going to change that for me. Because what's that money going to give me? I'd probably want to go to the office and hang out with my artists mm. and get told to go home. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Money is, is not important to me. The long-term progression is, is my end goal, which is to make Ditto as powerful as any of those major labels. And it may sound ridiculous now saying that, but it would have sounded ridiculous if you saw my old council house and said you were even going to have an office. So, you know, we'll see. Because right, we're kind of coming up short on time. What, what do you... Um, like, you said that like you built an office. Um, is, it, is it in Shoreditch? Where is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that, 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 that must be costly, but then just even having that, like, what was the kind of sense of pride that you had that once, like, the actual office was completed? Like, just walk us through that. So, we have a huge headquarters in Liverpool, where most of our staff are, that's still there. We had an office in London, you know, there was quite, it was getting quite cramped. And then when we started management, one of the first things we wanted was a studio, which I wanted for a while anyway. But, you know, I've got a big zoo now, I've got artists that need to be in the studio. And then, it's like, man, I want a big space in London, you know, that people can come to and make music and I love going to every day and, you know, my favourite artists can come into and record and it's a big hub. And it, it is a statement also, you know, it's a big statement. It's a huge office in short, it's, it's not cheap, but, you know, we're doing well. And rather than go and, like I said, buy content, I'd rather put that into creating over the next 12 months because it's unlimited what I can create in that place. If I give artists tools, they're gonna to go, you know, make something amazing, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But it is a statement, and it's gonna say ditto as big as it can in the letters. I mean, in terms of the company doing well, I think you, did you say that you, you're doing, was it, you're up 20% on last year? We're up about 30% on last year. Label 30. services are up, subscriptions are up 30%. I mean, the whole music industry's going up, you know, so it's no, not no, kind no, of- we're talking about you guys. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, for sure. The industry's going up, but I think because, because of where you are within it, sometimes people say there's a knock-on effect, but there's some others that aren't. Thirty percent in business. Yeah, no, very true, very is, true. Is, but is. that's why I'm getting calls every day, you know, for investment. But what do they want to buy it and, and sell it? Mm. We're doing very well, but there's a, we're a long way off where I want to be, and I'm going to keep working, you know, till we get there. Because I've, I've been doing this every day when we weren't going up thirty percent a year, when no one wanted to put their music on iTunes. I've literally sat, you know, 
Imagine the first year of business telling people that we're on MySpace, why don't you pay me to go on iTunes, why would I do that? You know, people writing stuff on the internet, this is a scam, they're trying to charge musicians money, this is a scam, that's all I got for two years. So I've kind of, whatever the music market is doing today is great, but still, my long-term plan, create content, get new acts in, develop them, have the biggest artists in the world. Cool, and, and lastly, what, what, what advice would you give, sounds cliche, but I have to give the cliche one, what advice would you give artists about one, how they can find themselves to be a priority on a platform sure. or a company like Ditto. And just, if they are gonna go to a major, what kind of things they, should they be looking out for? So looking at the artists that we kind of currently work with, there's loads of artists that aren't really doing anything, but they'll ask me stuff all the time and I'm in, I'm in communication with them and I'll help them. You can, always, you can always email me or tweet me and ask me anything and I will always reply. And if you listen to, to the advice I give you, I, you know, it, I'm not saying I'm going to give you the best advice, but, you know, some people aren't ready to, to use our percentage platform, but they're better on the subscription platform. But at that point, I want to still make sure that everyone in the company knows about it and we can develop it to come through. So, you know, just kind of keep up with what we're doing, really. Get to all, you know, make relationships, you know, not just with me, just to people. If you, if you live out in the sticks, you know, that's it's going to be very difficult to kind of for something to happen unless it goes off online. You know, consider, consider moving. You know, consider going and doing something no one's doing, go to another country. You've really got to kind of be prepared to work as hard as you can. If you're working as hard as we are, then definitely we'll take you on. Mm -hmm. What about advice you give to artists who are newly going on to major labels? I mean, you know, you've got more power than you think you've got. Like we were saying before, if someone's throwing a big check at you, that's not for your benefit. You know, you've got to understand these are businessmen. They don't throw money away for no reason. If someone's offering you half a million for the album, that's because they think your album's going to earn more than half a million. So do you want to keep that album for the next 10 years and make money out of it? Or do you want half a million and go and put that into another album? Just really add it up. Don't be blindsided by money in the short term. Um, and get a good lawyer who's not affiliated to anyone, you know, to do with who you're signing with, really. Mm. Just think about everything long term. Think about five albums. Think about where you want to be. And is this deal going to push you where you want to be? Is this the best team? in the industry right now to come in and make sure everyone knows about this release. Are they gonna sign it, put it out and do nothing? Are you not gonna get a phone call? Are you not gonna see any royalties? Are you gonna spend two years in a deal so you can't release any more music? Really, really be careful about what you're doing and make sure you get the best deal for you, not someone else. And lastly, like, how did you, how did you, being that you, um, like you said, you came from being an artist, being in Windows, how did you how did you get your your business now and how do you how did you know how to like negotiate because i'm sure you would have made mistakes you try getting eight pound off a granny when you do it <laughs> i'd go back and you'd be like you knock the door no one would answer i know you're hiding behind the curtains like i guess every time so you just kind of learn really by throwing yourself into as much as you can failing at it and trying again that's all you can do try and fail at everything faster than anyone else's because no one comes into anything knowing anything i didn't go to university but i just kept trying stuff that failed learning from that and kept doing it but quickly and that's all you can do really you've just got to kind of use your instinct which is usually right you know because we've nearly taken deals man there's been loads of times we've gone pretty far down and then me and my brother like i oh, just just doesn't really feel right you know and then, you know, a year later, we know it wasn't the right thing to do. But it's been tempting. But, you know, you're talking to me now as like you're someone who runs a successful company. But I've been doing it for 12 years. You know, the same thing every day. People aren't going to see that. And people didn't know when we were doing it. And you've got to be happy for people not to know. Um, and just keep, just keep on making mistakes, man. And don't be afraid to, to make mistakes. And as long as you just keep learning and just you know, keep going, you will make it. There's no doubt, as I said before, if you plan something for 10 years and just keep going towards it, you're gonna make it. Uh, Lee, I'm, I'm gonna leave it there because I'm hoping that when you have this Ditto Music Awards or something along the line. Man, definitely come to our party. We've Please. Got, yeah. Can I get an invite, yeah? Yeah, no, of course, I'll both of you, of course. it's gonna be expensive, like 5K, like the other people. No, we, do you know what we're doing? I'm taking the four grand I would have spent on the table and buying everyone a meal. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> like, I'm not, it's not, you don't have to pay. We're just gonna take like, I'll probably just do five categories, get 10 people down with a plus one and then just put a meal on or, you know, maybe more, I don't know. But that yeah. was the plan. I just don't want to spend it on music week. I'd rather <laughs> just do my own thing. Yeah, man. But Lena, you know, it's been amazing, man. It's been, and, and, and personally, I, like as a, I, I wouldn't say a fellow entrepreneur, but just like sticking at something when no one else really believed in it. 
Like it's 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 isolating at times because you're you're going somewhere and you're looking to your left to your right and none, it sounds cliche. None of your friends are really doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, and sometimes when I'm talking to my friends, like I've got friends who work in jobs and I'm like, yo, you're not doing that. And like my energy, I'll start thinking like, what? I'll be like, why are they not like that? And it's, I just realised that they've been systemised yeah. and like, I've just broken that mould. So it's like the intensity is like, if you're just a nine to five, well, there's nothing wrong with it but they just don't. It's hard to understand, isn't it? But you've got to... I, you have to live it. I've never really worked for people. Like I said, I've always kind of done just crappy odd jobs and stuff because I don't really want to work for someone, but I tried it, but it was just... My whole thing was I'm just working here to, to benefit you and there's no point... Me, I'm not going to put my energy into all that. That's why my staff, you know, I make sure they're getting something out long term. They're going to get shares in the blockchain. They get a percentage of stuff they do. You know, I want to make them, you know, grow with what I'm doing as well, you know? and create something everyone wins. It's not really about, that's kind of an old model. I mean, look at Jeff Bezos, man. He's paying people $7 an hour and he's mm. the richest guy on the planet and they had to legally challenge it to get him to pay more. Mm. What's wrong with you? Yeah, man. But you're doing it the right way, man. You're doing it, you, it's the humanist approach and it's still winning because you've got a good product, you've got a good brand and I don't think that can be tainted because the successes are all there to see, so. Yeah, I'm thanks. Not, it is mad, like, say, even now, people don't really know what we do because I don't really have time to explain. Even the percentage stuff, a lot of people don't know we do it. A lot of our own artists don't. And we haven't kind of had time to break it down properly and do it. Um, but hopefully stuff like this really helps, man. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate the questions. Like A lot of people don't really look into it much, you know, no, before you. they interview me at all. <laughs> it's a safe <laughs> stuff. I'll billboard thing in a minute. It would be good. All right, we're good. All right. So what's your plans with everything?